Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at SSD drives. In this episode specifically, we're taking a look at external SSD drives. Why would I want one, and how do I use one? Now, if you're already using a USB key, which uses flash memory, you're already most of the way to an SSD drive. In fact, much of what distinguishes this from an SSD external drive is the packaging. This uses the same technology inside, but it does have the USB tip built right into it, and it's a little bit ruggedized around the outside for fitting into your pocket without getting too damaged. Now, SSD drives are often ruggedized a little bit more, but they're built into a bigger package, and they're usually higher capacity as well. So while these ones typically come in capacities of maybe 1, 2 gigabytes, higher if you're a power user, these ones come in capacities of 64 gigabytes or more because you want to store a lot more data externally than you would on, say, a USB key. These drives also come with an external cable, which supplies power and data to the device. In this case, we have the Kingston HyperMax 3.0, which uses a USB 3.0 connection for faster speeds. Now, you can use external SSD drives using the older USB 2.0 technology, but it won't be quite as fast, although you still can use it. Now, there are a number of advantages to using an external SSD drive instead of the old school mechanical external drive. Number one, they're more rugged. You can actually take a little bit more of a knocking than you can with a mechanical drive. If you have a mechanical drive on the edge of your desk, for example, and it falls off, it could get damaged just dangling around and hitting the side of the desk. Whereas one of these, it can take a little bit more of a shock because they're designed a lot more tightly and there's no moving parts inside. Number two, because they're all electronic and no moving parts inside, it runs cooler than an external mechanical drive and it also uses less power. So if you're pulling all of your power off the USB bus and getting the power straight from your notebook computer, it won't claw back on your battery quite so fast as a mechanical drive. Of course, the lack of moving parts inside the SSD drive also means that you can actually create a much smaller device, as opposed to the mechanical drives, which require a motor and a bunch of spinning platters and all that other stuff. So you can actually get a much smaller, more compact and portable device when you're going to SSD. Now, the disadvantages of the external SSD are much the same as the internal SSD drives. They're generally much smaller in capacity, and per gigabyte, they are a lot more expensive than the old school mechanical drives. Now, of course, one of the reasons people use external drives is to store a lot of data which the internal drive on a notebook won't handle. And this can be a real problem if you're deciding to go to SSD because it can get insanely expensive getting a drive of that capacity. So if you're planning to store a lot of data, for example, you're storing high-definition video for editing, you'll probably still want to use an old-school mechanical drive just because the capacity is a lot less expensive even though it is a little bit more fragile when it's out in the field. Don't forget to check out the other parts in this series where we'll show you how to upgrade your MacBook Air to an SSD drive. We'll show you how to swap it in your notebook computer, and we'll also tell you what SSD is. You can see the show notes for this and the other parts in this series at butterscotch.com.